So good morning, everybody. I'm very happy to be here today. And I'm not going to speak long about Alexander because then I won't be able to finish my presentation in time. I just want to say a few words. I have known Alexander since, I believe, 1999, when we for the first time met in one of the Pandanus conferences in Prague. And ever since then, we have been having uh, very fruitful conversations. And I'm going to speak today about something which I've long wanted to do. And I know that Alexander would have loved it. So I was thinking very much of him when I was uh, preparing this presentation. I entitled it, Sony is the Way of Kalavu, Agam, that is Achananur 122, as a poem on poems. Uh, as you all know, I'm deeply engaged in the critical re-edition of the Sangam Corpus, and one of the things that are on my mind for a long time is the internal dating of the corpus itself. It's perfectly clear that it's not possible to use just one parameter and um, date poems within the anthology on the basis of that parameter. But what I find works pretty well is if one develops uh, several parameters. So one of them clearly is morphology, another is uh, semantics, yet another is the use of formula. And uh, one of them also, in fact, and that is what I'm going to speak about today, is the way the poetry functions as poetry. If you look into the early parts of the corpus, it's still very close to uh, formulaic usage of, of, uh, of, of oral usage of formula, form, f formula. That means possibly some of the older poems were in fact still oral poetry. For the later part, you can see that the formulae start, the formulaic systems start disintegrating. And that means we are dealing with written literature from that point on and a very good, there are not so many examples, but there's a couple of very good examples. Probably the... uh, I don't know who is, who is at fault here, but somebody is at fault here. Yeah, I, I switch off. Yeah, okay. Okay, very good. So uh, one of the good examples is Agam 122. The interesting thing here is that uh, it's a poem which is not really part of the corpus, but which is it's a poem which turns back and reflects the corpus. Interestingly, this also shows on the formal level, you know that stanzaic poetry was late in being developed in Tamil. Um, from the Bhakti corpus onwards, of course, Tamil poetry is always stanzaic. You can see it even in the epics, the Silapadikaram still is a canto vice afterwards, the, the Chintamani, for example, already works in stanzas. You could see, if you want to, the first stanzas appear with the Aingurunuru because the Aingurunuru is the first thing that comes in decades. So that is a sort of stanza philosophy. Uh, if you think of the Kalitogai there, it's particularly uh, salient. And the interesting thing about Agam 122 is that uh, it has a sentence structure which emulates the stanza structure of the Kalitoge. I'm going to show you the poem briefly. Um, it's a poem about Kalavu, as I already said. We get a very simple Kilavi. Palai machan surat puratan aga tojiku soluvalai palai machal soliadu. So, what uh, the Chalaivi said while pretending to speak to the Tori when the Talaivan was behind the, the uh, Sira, it was Sira Puram, so that is behind the fence or hedge or whatever that partition was, and i.e. he is uh, not present on the scene, but he can listen, that's the idea. Um, I'm not going to read the poem in Tamil because if I do that, uh, we are not going to have time to get through all of this. But if you look at my punctuation, you can see that we have a sort of stanzaic pattern here. Two lines, two lines, two lines, two lines, three lines, three lines, two lines, two lines, tanisol, and a longer paragraph. So if you just keep this image in mind visually and compare it to, uh, sorry, that was not my intention, and compare it to a typical Kalitogai, that is what you get. You get a taravu, which is the sort of uh, uh, exposition, 
Then you get the tari size, that is a whole row of uh, uh, stunts of the, of the same form. You get a tani sol, and then you get the sori tagam, which is a sort of uh, a resume. So this, of course, uh, this is a very short kalitoge, a very simple one where you have a very clear structure. You have many longer kalitoge where, in fact, the, uh, the elements are much more complicated and longer. And I would say that this is what we have here. And the interesting thing is that we end with a tanisol and with something that corresponds to a suritagam. And this is actually what we get. We get all the situations here. And then we get uh, a conclusion that says how difficult is Kalavu with a simile, by the way. So I'm just going through the translation so that you have an idea what we're talking about. Even if there's no festival, this noisy town of the Sons of Dark Toddy will not sleep. Even when it dozes off with its rich market streets, mother with outspoken harsh words will not sleep. Even when mother with her fettering strict confinement sleeps, the watchman with sleepless eyes will make haste. Even when the young guards with shining spears sleep, the sharp toothed dogs with right curling tails will be excited. Even when the loud mouse dogs lose excitement and doze off, the white round area of the sky stands revealed by moonlight almost as bright as day. Even when the moon joins the rocks and deep darkness falls, the strong mouthed owl that lives on house rats will shriek heartrending at midnight when demons roam. Even when the male with curved beak silently dozes off, the glorious voice of the house cock will sound. At the time when they all doze off for one single day, the lover of our restless heart won't come. Therefore, like the rocky outer forest around Titan's Urande with its notchy hedges for the good horses of leaping gait that went galloping in enormous motion so that the metal adorned anklet rattled, one of many thorns it is called indeed, friend, our secret love. So you see what is happening here we get an enumeration of familiar Agam situations. One of the subtopoi of Agam is the girl lying sleepless awake at night. There are two reasons for her lying sleepless. Either she's expecting her lover, or the lover is away and she cannot sleep because he's not there. And here we get a sort of summary poem which sums up all the reasons that have been given in earlier poetry why a meeting at night could not take place. And accordingly, we get this summed up. Here we get another slight turn. This poem is attributed to Parana, and it's attributed to Parana for a good reason. It takes a Puram simile. So the, the, uh, the conclusion works on the basis of a, of, a, of a Puram simile, which does not actually add much to uh, the content of the poem. The conclusion is, that it's very difficult to meet at night. Kalabu is, is a difficult thing. And you see here the term Kalabu is used, which is not actually a poetic term, term or only very rarely a poetic term, but it's a metapoetic term. It's a term that comes from, uh, um, from uh, poetics. So if I now go on, the interesting thing is that we can find the parallels very easily for some. Uh, of each of these subsituations. So this is basically what I have done. Um, for each of the obstacles to Kalavu, we can find quotations in the earlier corpus. In some of the quotations, I'm fairly certain that it's exactly one quotation. So if, for example, Kurontogai uh, 47, the one for the moonlight, I'm sure that this is exactly the poem the poet was thinking of. For others, in fact, there are multiple candidates, but uh, what I have done for today is I brought one pertinent poem for, for, for each situation. And uh, another interesting thing is that the quotation almost all come from the Kurundagai. It's also possible to find some in the Natrinai. The Aingurunuru is already more difficult, but uh, the target anthology for Agam 122, I think is clearly the uh, the Korotare. So now I'm given giving you simply screen by screen the parallels, and then you can see for yourself how it works. 
just one moment. I want to have a clock at the side so that I'm not. Mostly encroaching on everybody else's time. <clears throat> so, first situation. Irumpili Mahar, Ivarungal Mudur, Dira Vilindri, Ayanum Tunja Dagum. This is not a particularly frequent topos, the festival, but there is a very clear parallel this time in the, nat in the Natrenai. I, I, I just don't read the Tamil because uh, it's taking too much time. So the village, crowding, gathering happily with the burden of noise increasing, is engaged in a festival in the bustling streets. Even in the full dark of night, I do not sleep. So here the topos is clearly one of the heroine lying awake because the lover simply is away. If we go to the next, for this one, one could of course have found dozens of poems. So it's a very frequent agam topos that uh, mother hinders the rendezvous. There's a couple of agam poems, not only this, where mother is awake at night and actually clings to the heroine. So this is a particularly uh, salient passage. And here I read the Tamil just because it's so beautiful. Pardum elindre peyalum o vade, carade can panipa visum adandra lay, puli pal pali pudalva puli, anavenum annaum anno. Time without light and the rain incessantly splashing to make demons' eyes quiver. And on top of that, mother, who says mother, holding tight the sun with his tiger toothed amulet, alas. So the topic here is that the girl wanted to go out. The lover is standing outside, but she cannot go because mother is clinging to her. So that is exactly what we have in Agam. That, that's the exact illusion that we have in Agam 22. Third situation, the watchman. This is also a bit more tricky because uh, the watchmen are not normally an obstacle to Kalavu. And, and this is why I'm fairly certain that, uh, again, I've hit on the exact quotation because normally the watchmen appear as uh, a sort of um, concomitant to some, some imagery. They are not actually interfering in the plot of the poem. But here they are. So, Tunja Vajitori Kavalar, Kanakai Vahayin Varundiyen Nenju Pun Utra Viru Makane. In the distress from the wound in my heart, troubled because of the special manner of time calculation of the night watchman, my eyes don't sleep, oh friend. So, here, uh, this is also a sociologically interesting poem. The night watchmen are not only keeping night watch, but they announce the, uh, the yamams, they announce the bells, so to speak. And uh, this is what keeps her awake. And then we have situation number four. Here we have a rare word, of course, nyali, which, however, simply is a nai. So uh, this is a topos, which again is rare. And that means that I'm not sure um, whether the poem they were thinking of survives. There is no parallel to the exact situation where the uh, dogs hinder the heroes coming. But uh, there clearly is uh, Koro Doga 272, where a, beggar, uh, where a beggar gets a benediction. And the benediction is that he should, perceive, uh, that he should conceive a full belly of food from a house in a street where there are no dogs. So this is the one place in Sangam literature where the dogs actually are uh, portrayed as guardian dogs who keep the city safe. You, may you obtain in a safe vessel of hot, of hot fresh water, hot draughts in the cold season, and eat your fill with the arms of a single house, very white ghee with boiled red rice, at a white gate without dogs in a flawless street. Uh, I think this is, a, this is a very important observation. So if there are really situations which are not depicted in the poems that we know, then I think this is a good argument to say, to say that there's quite a lot that we lost. I think 
it's perfectly clear that we lost a lot of things if we look into the later commentaries and look at the uh, anonymous quotations. There's quite a lot in the anonymous quotations which uh, corresponds in time, not to the very early period, but at least to the inter intermediate period. And I think, uh, I think we, we are so used to perceiving uh, the Sangam corpus as, as uh, the canon of Tamil, Tamil literature that we forget that in fact, it simply is what survives of Tamil literature. And I think places like this show this very clearly. So the, is it the fifth already? Yes, the fifth is Nilavur. And uh, that of course is uh, absolutely easy to identify. And I'm sure that just like me, Alexander would, would have identified this on the spot. Eli varunar kalavirke nallai allai neduven nilave. For the tryst with the one who comes at night, you are no good. So here we have the, clearly the situation that the liar, lover is trying to come and uh, he, he is, he is a, it's a, a very troublesome if everybody can see it. So that's why uh, moonlight is actually not wished for. Um, this is also the only early Sangam poem where we have the term color. And here I would argue exactly the other way around than with Agam 122. In Agam 122, Kalavu already is the poetological term. And clearly that is what is alluded to. But I think this here is an early poem where Kalavu was still one of the possible ways of referring to the Iravukuri, to the night trust. So Kugai, the owl, that also is not very frequent, but uh, we get a couple of poems. And I think this here is possibly the one that was uh, uh, alluded to. Kundra kugai kurarinum anjuman ali tenenjam inie. When the owl shrieks from the hills, fearful indeed and pitiable is my heart now. So uh, this again, so we see that we get two two situations in this in these eight uh, in these eight forms one situation is that the girl is lying inside awake the other situation is that the man is trying to come from outside which are two two uh, very clear situations that we get uh, uh, in the in in the earlier poetry so the difficulty of the way at night and the trouble of uh, being being confined in the house at night without, without the lover and here again, we are on the side of the Talaivi who is lying inside the house and uh, is waiting for the lover and does not know whether he will manage to come. Here we have uh, situation number seven. And this of course is uh, far-fetched in Kurundogai 122 because the crow of the cock is something that announces the morning. So this is not really any longer part of um, waiting for the lover, that, but that is the point in time when the lover has to go. This is what we see very clearly in Korontogai 157. Kuku said the cock just to say, separating you from your lover who touches your shoulder, indeed like a sword dawn has come. So in other words, uh, this situation sort of sticks out in 122 because uh, the situation in Agam that we know is that the lover is there already and he has to go because the cock calls. This does not mean that he cannot come. Of course, you could say, uh, you, you can easily say how, you can easily see how this can be turned if, he has not managed to come until sunrise. Then, of course, the cock uh, announces uh, the end of the hour where it would have been possible to come. So that is so. Here, the play lies in turning the topos around. And then, finally, of this, of course, we could also have found very many. When they all sleep, the guy doesn't come. Uh, for that, we have, for example, Korondogai 176, Orunal Varalan, Irunal Varalan, Pannal Vande, Panimoji Payitren, Nannar Nenja Negirta Pindrai, Varaimudi Ternin Pohione. For one day he didn't come, for two days he didn't come. 
after he had come for many days repeating humble words and made my good heart soft, like honey ripening on the mountain, he is gone. So, uh, the conclusion to this is very simple. Adanal palmut pendral tori nam kalave. Therefore, one of many thorns it is called indeed, friend, our secret love. So, uh, you, you see my point? As a poem in the old sense of the word, one on, Agang 122 does not make sense. It's not possible that uh, to have all these situations at the same time. This poem makes sense if we take it as a metapoetic poem, which uh, alludes to the possibilities in the older corpus. And you can speculate on what might have been the purpose of such a thing. One possibility is that this is uh, a, poet's, a poet's way of having fun. For sure it is. I had a lot of fun in looking for parallels. And as I said, there are many more than that I'm showing you here. Uh, and the other thing is this could be used for educative purposes. And this is how I use it today. This is one of the poems I show my students to train them in the subsituations of, of uh, uh, Kurinji. And here I stop. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, maybe some questions. Uh, Uh, Eva, actually, I have some questions. Uh, I, thank you very much. I, I really enjoyed your presentation. Uh, do we know anything uh, about the author of, of, of this poem? Do we have any other poems by the same author, which would be, well, clearly philological like this one, or other poems are just ordinary, or is anything uh, telling us that he is more like a pulavar type of poet uh, and probably this, do you think that this might show that uh, the poem belongs to a later stratum of Ahana Nuru or what, 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 what are other conclusions and what do you think about the author? So the author I already said in the beginning is Paranar. So one uh -huh. of, the, of, the, of the three old ones. So it's so Paranar. And I, I think it. It, was, uh -huh. it was attributed to Parana on the basis of the Urandai simile. I, in I every it. poem, in every Agam poem by, by Para, now you have this Puram simile, right? And I yeah. think this is a typical case of later appropriation, just like Kapila. If Kapila has composed everything in the corpus that is attributed to him, he must have at least 500 years. He must have lived for at least 500 years. And uh, Para now also, if the early poems uh, associated with his name are uh, composed by him, then this year clearly is an attribution. Yeah, you know that uh, of the Sangam poets, three names survived into, into Shaiva times, namely Kabila, Paranar, and Nakira. And uh, that simply means he was one of the, one of the um, obvious addresses to attribute poems to that were made later. Yeah. And yes, of course, this is a late poem in the, in the Agam sequence. And I think uh, what would be worse is checking through the whole Kalitogai and see whether there's any way of linking some Kalitogai passages to this, because that was give, that was give us uh, uh, an even better hint. Of course, this is younger than Kurodogai and Nakrinai, but that is not particularly surprising. However, if one could find parallels in the Kalitogai or even in the Tirukura, that would, uh, uh, that would show that this is a sixth century poem or something like that. Thank you. Thank you.